Regular viewers of History Hunters know that Sarah is crazy about animals, so recently she jumped at the chance to book an overnight stay at Vision Quest Ranch at the Monterey Zoo in California to experience an elephant up close. Gonna play with elephants, doodah, doodah. Gonna give it about that food, doodah, doodah. Gonna play with elephants all the doodah day. And since this is the History Hunters channel, let's talk about the history of the first elephants to arrive in the United States. It's said to have been brought to Salem in 1796 aboard the ship America. The second elephant to arrive in the United States was named Old Bet, which arrived in Boston in 1804. Hakaliah Bailey owned the elephant and made some money with it to supplement his rather shaky income as a farmer in Summers, New York. There in 1820, he built the Elephant Hotel, which was a tavern and inn, in 1816, Bailey took Old Bet to make money in Maine by charging people to see the rare site. As they were leaving an appearance in Alfred, Maine, they were confronted by a local farmer and disgruntled human being by the name of Daniel Davis, who shot and killed the elephant. Davis found it sinful for poor people to spend money to see an elephant. Welcome to the Monterey Zoo, where we'll be visiting the zoo, playing with some elephants, and then later on spending the night in a tent and then also having an elephant experience in the morning. Hi. I am a bed and breakfast check-in, but also have a elephant experience and... Yeah. Is your whole group here? Yes. Just two of us. Okay. Do you need that? Yes, I got to pick it up. Right now in the uh, room is a king size bed. Okay. Do you need for you name, nice. name and age, sign and date? This is acknowledging that you guys recognize you're working around wild animals and you'll follow any rules that they do. Oh, that's the rainforest reptile experience. <laughs> Look it. You can ride a yogi bear. You hear the birds howling? Okay, so what time is it? 10, 28, so we have an hour we can visit. There's two of them. What? I mean, what? <laughs> Look at your hand. You're so soft, I know it. I got to touch one of you before. Hi, Nemo. Hi, Nemo. But they don't tell you what kind this one is. I can't remember the name of. But this is the kind we pet at Nurture by Nature. So we fed the bananas. Hi, Daddy! Since I'm on out of this concrete jungle, so you know how excited I get about history, Sarah gets excited about animals. Sir, these are, I think these are those ones oops, that always kiss. Yeah. Do you Cat. know that white tigers aren't found in the wild? It's a, um, a bred genetic mutation. It's not something that's found in the wild. It was something that was done in captivity. So they, are they all in captivity? Huh? There's none out in the wild. They haven't released you them? You won't out? find it naturally in the wild. They're snuggling over there. I don't know how to check right. 
Well, you better learn how to chuff right. <laughs> it's, I got the attention. The white one's looking at us, but I don't know how to do it properly. Look how pretty he is. His tongue's hanging out. Look at his tongue hanging out. Yeah. Our cat's your favorite? It's, they're one of the top. I love bears too. And how do elephants rate? They're awesome animals, so they rate pretty high. I just want to experience. I've ridden one before, but I want to touch it. I huh. want to, well, I've touched it, but I want to experience like the trunk and stuff. Be really neat. It's a black bear, right? Because he's got the white nose. Yeah. Look at <laughs> Hi, bear. <laughs> he's got his leg hiked up. Your little lips are cute. Hi, little bear. Isn't he cute? Hi, little bear. Aww. He's scratching his foot. Oh, you can see his little pants. Okay. Scratching his foot. Hi, little bear. Want to take him home? Yeah. He'd be so fun to pet. When he just scratch his ears and snuggle with him. <laughs> Is that your new friend? That's my new friend. Look at his hands. Look at his hands. Hi. Hi, Baboon. He's cute, Baboon. You know? Yeah, I had one day without it. Come here. All she does is look away and he comes. <laughs> Wait, those Have you been up to the white tigers? No. Oh, kind of I wish I could pet you. I see you smelling me. <laughs> that, that's my Scarlet and Loki are inside. Did you hear? Yeah. <laughs> Sarah stood at the glass window separating her from Moksha. A white oh, Bengal tiger and tried to get his attention by chuffing, which is a commutative sound of greeting. He's interested. All the back out there still. Wishful thinking, huh? <laughs> Big old teeth. So cute. Moments after Sarah walked away from the tiger, he decided to waltz over to the window to check out small children, where he gave us a big surprise. <laughs> But you can you can play with him, but don't tap the glass. But go back down. He's Looks like he scratched it, huh? Yeah. Oh, oh baby. wow! It's a baby. Say it's a baby. Hi. Yeah. It's a baby. <laughs> can we dance and let the tiger? <laughs> oh, so sweet. What an experience, huh? Especially for the little one. I know, yeah, right? I could die under. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've yeah. never yeah. seen a tiger do that. I'm glad the glasses. Yeah. He doesn't want to play. Next, it was time for a little introductory session to learn about Butch, a former circus elephant which once gave rides to people but is now retired at the age of 45. Oh, well, you're ready for us, huh? You wish. The days of the public believing that wild animals should be used as a form of entertainment is disappearing. The popularity of the traveling circus, which was once a major event in small towns across America, has declined rapidly, quickened by a new understanding of the hardship placed on elephants and by the sheer economics of maintaining healthy animals and shipping them about in confined quarters. Sanctuaries have become an answer to accommodating the needs of these long-lived creatures. Now, Butch comes to us from a carnival background. 
He used to be a ride elephant. He's not from anything negative or abusive, though. He was just done being an entertainer and was ready to be an educational retiree. Butch is an African elephant. There are African and there are Asian, also known as Indian elephants. And the easiest way to tell the difference between the two, aside from the accent, of course, would be the size and shape of their ears. We were off to the staging area where we would each partake in giving the African elephant a good scrubbing and feeding him a favorite treat of carrots. They then removed the second one as well, so that he wasn't walking around lopsided. Inside the mouth, there are four grinding molars. We'll move him over to you guys, don't worry. Each molar is about the size of a small brick and looks like a row of big newtons. Two molars on top, two molars on bottom, and he's going to go through six sets of those molars during his lifetime. As he's chewing on the vegetation, it's going to wear the tooth down. As the tooth gets thinner, into their 60s, and that's the end of their life cycle anyway. You've heard of some facilities that will grind the food down, making the molars unnecessary, but the rest of the organs start breaking down, because that really is the end of the life cycle. He's a good kid. Because an elephant weighs so much, they have very specialized feet. If you look at an x-ray of an elephant's foot, they're actually standing on the tips of their toes. He's got his toenail in the front there. At the bottom of his foot, there is a hard callus pad. And much like the soles of our shoes, that callus pad helps protect him from the terrain that he's walking on. Now that pad is constantly growing. Out in the wild, the pad is worn down naturally from always being on the move. But here in captivity, in order to maintain proper foot care, much like how you would trim a horse's hoof back and shave the frog, we do basically the same sort of thing with these guys. Uh, you would shave that pad back using a lot of the same tools. If you didn't, that pad could get very, very thick. It could start to crack. You could end up with rocks and sticks and stuff getting stuck in there, which could lead to a bacterial infection. So we. We are scrubbing Butch the Elephant, Monterey Zoo Vision Quest Ranch, June 2021, getting our scrub on. Oh yeah. After we fed Butch, we had the afternoon to ourselves in this canvas tent, which sat high overlooking the area where the elephant and other animals frolic and find more food. Off to another side in front of our cabin, we could see the fertile fields of the Salinas Valley, made popular by author John Steinbeck. 
Even though Butch must have downed a hundred carrots or more, we could clearly see how he was foraging for hay left on the ground inside of his massive pen. We were told to stay close to our cabins because we were going to be visited by staffers with other animals. First to come along was Ernie, a Patagonia Mara, which technically is a rodent. And almost capybara like too. Well, he's in the capybara family. Not to be confused about Chupo, El Chupacabra. Oh. <laughs> Someone else the other day said, Is that El Chupacabra? Like, very seriously. It's like, no, 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 that's the mm -hmm. Mexican girl sucker and supposedly. And those look evil, don't they? Exactly. This is very much better behaved than any of my dogs. This is not normal behavior for these guys. They are prey animals. Sarah thought that already resembled a bunny from the side and also a donkey. But I also saw a rabbit in him and also the face of a deer. Talk about an unusual animal. Walk on. He's so good. Bye. Look at that little tail. <laughs> Another animal to drop by was a lemur named Stitch that we previously saw caged up at the zoo. There are more than 100 different species over there, and I got thought we had two different species uh, called red and black, and white and black, and they're both up because of the cheeks. We actually do a lot of pollinizing. For dinner, we slipped off the compound and enjoyed a delicious meal at Gino's Italian restaurant. We'd recommend it to anybody. The next morning, we showed up for a special feeding of Butch. We were each given a handful of carrots to feed him. Since Sarah was enjoying it so much, I decided to give her my carrots to feed him so that I could record her delighting in the experience. I <laughs> you love it? Yes. I've never got so close to the trunk. Oh, he's got prickly, though. Was yeah. <laughs> you can go ahead and start feeding his carrots. Oh, here, you feed it. Okay. Your trunk. Whiskers are pokey. There you go. No, do that one. Aww. <laughs> okay, I'll have you take a step right over here and we'll show you inside of his mouth. Oh, look at that. Just on cue, Butch opened wide so we could get a good look at his teeth. Okay, you see those brick like things in there? Those are his teeth. He has two molars up top and two molars on the bottom. And he goes through six sets of teeth in his lifetime. Wait, those are only two? Yeah, so, uh, he has uh, one tooth up top and one tooth on the bottom, but he does have um, his last set coming in. So you can see that it looks like two, mm -hmm. but the one in the front is actually dissolving back into the jaw and it are absorbing back into the jaw. And then the new one is moving it forward. Kind of like a conveyor belt. No, so it's actually attached to the Stuffing. bottom. So he kind of, he can't really like stick out his tongue. His breath isn't You're exactly so, the greatest, is it? So uh, I'm not sure. I haven't actually smelled his breath. I actually <laughs> smelled it. Maybe something. Yeah. <laughs> we walked back to our cabin to clear it out and watch Butch plot out into his yard, thoroughly pleased that we got to interact with this gentle giant. In the 1940s, an estimated 5 million African elephants roamed the continent. In 2014, the World Wildlife Fund estimated that only 700,000 remain. We want to thank you for joining us on this episode of History Hunters and hope that you enjoyed our trip to the Monterey Zoo and our interaction with Butch, the African elephant.